Brad, welcome. Thanks, Mark. Happy to be here. Hey, uh, so uh, about a month ago, I started with this Leadership 101 series, and uh, you were someone who I said I must have on this series. And uh, I wanted to frame for you, I don't think I told you why. So let me start off by, telling, by sharing with you why. Uh, I think there are very few leaders who have experienced the path to scale. And you know, you'll, you'll meet people who have operated at scale. You have people who have operated in a small, nimble environment, but very few people who have actually experienced the journey itself. So um, as someone who has both been successful in growing an organization, but also, I think, growing it the right way. And I know when we first met, you made a huge impression on me in terms of how you lead. And I thought you would just be a fantastic person to have on. So thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me and looking forward to the discussion. So, Brad, tell, tell the audience a little bit about what I'm referring to when I, when I talk about that journey. What was that journey, the big one? The journey that I think you're referring to is I just came off of last year, really just a, a wonderful career um, journey for myself and, it, and others who were there. Um, I was at Adobe as we really went through a massive digital transformation at our business. And, um, and it was about 12 years ago that Adobe acquired a business that I was with. Um, acquired by Adobe in the middle of the last economic downturn. And, um, and then we took that business and, you know, in 2019, that business probably did three and a half, four billion dollars of revenue. And so the journey from going from a couple hundred million, 12, 1300 people to what a, you know, eight to 10,000 person, uh, multi-billion dollar SaaS revenue business unit inside of Adobe, what that looks like was the journey I think you're referring to, Mark. Yeah. So, Brad, when you think about that, that, that summit at $4 billion and you think about Basecamp at $200 million roughly, were you, what, was the, what were you and the team thinking of as you started to make that climb? Were you like, hey, there's the number. It's four or $10 billion, Or was it these, our, next, our next plateau is this and our next plateau is that? Tell us a little bit about how you, what your vision was for scale. It's an interesting question and one that actually at my, in my current role at Bamboo HR that we're confronting and thinking about right now, because when you, when you get to, you know, the size of the size of Smartsheet, you guys have already, you're already part of the cool kids club, anything over a hundred million dollars in ARR, you're part of the cool kids club and you can, Hey, declare success. And many people who have been on the journey at every scale, whether that's a hundred million, 200 million, 300 million, there's some portion of the population of the company that's like, you know what? It's never going to get better than this. Like we succeeded. It's time to, to check out because there's no more goodness in the future. But what we found was if you find the believers and you end up just really having a broad and um, very, very um, intentional vision of how the industry is going to change. And it may not be what the Gartner and you know, ID, IDC and Forrester analysts are writing about today. But it's like, how do we actually take this category, redefine it, and then have the moxie to actually go lead it? Um, that's really what I think drove Adobe from where it was to where it is today, because it wasn't taking, we started with web analytics. How did web analytics um, you know, end up running a marketing cloud and leading the marketing cloud category? It was you know, really um, stepping back and saying, how is this category going to emerge and how do we step in and lead it? Brad, how much of that growth path was influenced by the strategy you had set forth versus the team reacting to what others were doing? And, it, and I guess the question goes for both your past experience and also what you're seeing at Bamboo now. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. People have different views on this. And it's a debate that I think um, every product marketer and every executive um, confronts. is like, how much do you pay attention to competitive intelligence and what everybody else in the market is doing? And the answer is, I think you need to be aware but you have to also have confidence in what it is you're, you're all about. What's your mission? Mm -hmm. And I love the mission of Smartsheet as you think about, you know, how do we really step back and empower everyone to change the way that they're working? At Bamboo, um, our mission is to set people free to do great work. I think everything starts with a mission. Smartsheet's got a compelling mission. Bamboo does as well. And so then everything else after that, once you're, you're really firm on what your mission is, everything else you can be flexible on. How you execute, what sequence you execute, all of those things I think you can be much more flexible on as long as you're committed to what that, you know, that, that mission is. And that doesn't matter. I don't care what the mission of my competitor is. We know what we're doing and what we're going after. Mm -hmm. Brad, as you look at the people that you've teamed with over the years, 
Um, do you think team members can can scale with you? Like when you think about the, you, the leadership teams you've assembled, how many times have you seen someone be able to stay with you on that journey versus, you know what, there are logical points where, you know, you just need someone with that scaled mindset. What have you observed? Yeah, I, I think it, it's really, it's, it's individual dependent. I kind of, I mentioned, you know, I've, I've experienced, and I think every successful startup experiences this to where you have some people who've been on the journey who just, who just um, don't see what the future's about, or they long for the good old days when it was, you know, small and you knew everybody's name. Um, the, the powerful thing is, is when people have the, they can really acknowledge the history, but embrace the future. Mm -hmm. and, um, and say, you know what, I'm committed to learn and to continue to grow to do it. So I've seen a mix of both. Um, I don't think um, any successful company has existed solely on imported talent, nor do I think um, any scale company has grown uh, simply by just looking internally for every piece of talent and every augmentation that you need to do. Um, I think it's about um, you know, figuring out who, what, what we really need to scale. My, my theory is, between 100 million in revenue and a billion, you're going to have to rebuild the entire company at least twice. Mm -hmm. People, process, how we work together, every function, how we develop product, how we take the product to market, how we price, everything. I think you have to do a complete um, clean slate wipe down and say, how are we going to rebuild to get to that next level? So Brad, one of the things that uh, that your your comments uh, trigger for me is this this notion of the good old days. And and when people often ask me, do you miss the good old days? I often say, you mean the good old days when we had no capital? The good old days when we had so little customer signal? The good old days when we couldn't attract talent? Those good old days? And it's it's funny how you know history rev revises itself, right? And it's uh, I think the importance of looking forward and and really taking advantage and embracing the things we have as a tailwind right now capital reach customers all this signal coming in it's like that is what you sort of wait all your career for so so when you take those those lessons that you've learned on the scale and you apply those to bamboo which is a smaller organization than adobe what are the things that are highly applicable to your current stage like what is what are your top two or three things that you're bringing in yeah, I think, you know, Mark, you actually, you brought one home in our, in our first conversation. You know, I go back to what you, when you were talking about the good old days at, at Smartsheet, when you were selling your first enterprise customer. <laughs> and, and I remember you told me, he was like, oh, I went in with this big ask. And, and it was like, we were going to hit them with a big number and they were going to yeah. really have a tough time swallowing that. And, um, and I can't remember what the number was, but I think it was, and I can't remember which customer was it. Well, let's just say it was in the food and beverage industry. A food multi, and beverage. Multi-billion dollar company, Brad. Multi-billion dollar company. And Mark Mater is going to go in and hit him with a big ask. And I think your, the big number you came up with was something like $5,000. It was um, huge, Brad, huge. <laughs> it, was, it was 20x what our average revenue per customer was. So we, we introduced that big number. And, and that mindset, I think, is one that's critical for any growing and emerging company is I think you have to, you have to mentally say, we're in to play the big game. And I think a lot of times as our human mind, we like to limit ourselves. Like immediately, sometimes when you see a problem, you start to say, oh, there's, uh, this is all the reasons why this wouldn't work. And these are all the reasons why I can't do that. And I think in business and in life, um, this mentality, I like to call it the why not us mentality right. is, is just opening your mind to say, well, someone's going to revolutionize the way people work in enterprises. Like, why not us? And for us at Bamboo HR, someone's going to completely change how people think about employee experience in the modern era. Like, it needs to change. Let's bring some humanity back to the workplace. Someone's going to do it. Well, why not us? Why not little old Bamboo HR? Why not Smartsheet? And for me, that mental kind of click that goes in um, I think unlocks people to say, you know what, I don't know exactly the next five steps we need to take, but I believe that we can get there as long as we work together as a team. So Brad, I remember the first time we met, I was struck by how optimistic you, you, you struck me. I mean, you're just, you're a positive person, right? And uh, I, I, I envy that in you actually, because I would say I'm more of a, as I share with my wife, I'm more of a, uh, a realist <laughs> with an optimist kicker. <laughs> so, so when things get tough, Brad, when, when you get dealt a hand, which is just uniformly 
bad. How do you how do you stay optimistic? How do you, how do you how do you encourage your team? Your team knows your hand. How do you how do you keep them on side? This is one. It's a fantastic question, and it's one that I think every leadership team and every employee at a company, you know, as we're dealing with the COVID nineteen crisis, as you do that, there are certainly headwinds, and this is not the way any of us expected to be start to begin the first few months of a new decade. Um, the 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 interesting thing is, I want to be an optimist, but you have to you have to yeah, it has to be coupled with that realism. There's a great um, uh, a great uh, principle that was taught in Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. It's called the Stockdale Paradox. And it's based on uh, the, uh, the teachings of James Stockdale, who was a prisoner of war in, the Viet in Vietnam. For seven years, he survived a prisoner of war camp where many of the other prisoners, unfortunately, who were imprisoned with him did not make it. And he, uh, this paradox that Jim Collins writes about is that um, James Stockdale said, why did you survive when others didn't? He said that so many people were too overly optimistic. Hey, we're going to get released by, you know, the, by next year. And when it didn't happen, they lost faith and, you know, lost hope. But the Stockdale paradox is as a team or as an individual, you have to expose yourself and fully embrace the brutal facts that are facing you. Mm -hmm. The brutal facts, embrace those. Yeah. But never lose faith that you'll that you'll um, persist in the end. Mm -hmm. And that to me is um, how I, how I look to a, how I try to apply things both in business and in my personal life is, yeah, it's tough. Let's, let's, let's get into how bad it is. Let's look at that. Let's not hide from it. We don't want any good news conference rooms at Bamboo. Um, we want to know the brutal facts, but we also want to have that optimistic body lean to where we're going to, we're going to prevail. We're going to be fine and we're going to get through it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the whole notion of togetherness. I remember when, when we went public, uh, as I shared with people that morning when we went out, when, when the stock first traded, it wasn't a feeling of euphoria. It was a feeling of great accountability. And this, this notion of others, Brad, it's, um, you know, it's working in service of your team, working in service of your, your fellow execs, your stakeholders, your shareholders, whoever it is, right? And it's, that feeling, I think what people expect is, they expect you to not be blind to the challenges, but like, what's the alternative, giving up? It's like, nobody came to work with you or for you or invest in you for you to give up, right? And it's, it, is, it is tough. I mean, as my CRO said today on a, on a, a podcast that we did, he goes, it's called work. <laughs> we work and it's not always easy. So uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I think I, I really wish you all the best in your new endeavor at Bamboo. Uh, it's exciting. Thank you. The company's doing really well. And I, I wish you guys all the success in the world. And, uh, and Brad, I think, I think one of the things that I'll take from our conversation today is, is not only your optimism, your experience having grown a business from a couple hundred million to almost four billion, but this whole notion and attitude of why not us? And uh, it's, if, if we can all embrace that attitude, I think we can do great things. So thanks for joining, Brad. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Best of luck to you and your team.